Hey everybody, I am glad to be back. Uh, welcome to the On Deck Circle podcast powered by FantasySixPack.net. I am your host, Dave Eddy, and of course you can find me on Twitter uh, at Corporal Eddy. Uh, this podcast is meant to go along with my popular uh, Dynasty rankings, which you can find on FantasySixPack.net. I uh, try to do these uh, podcasts every other weekend and update my rankings uh, every other weekend as well so um, you've either got fresh rankings or fresh podcasts to look forward to uh, we've had a little bit of a hiatus here uh, with the pandemic and everything that's been going on um, but i'm happy to be back happy to, to get things uh, back up and running um, last update was for the rankings was last uh, last sunday uh, two weeks prior to that i had done another one so if you haven't checked them out um, in a couple months, you know, definitely go back and do that. There wasn't any absolutely massive changes, but of course, you know, having, you know, months in between, there were, you know, there's a little bit of movement, um, but you know, like I said, nothing, nothing too drastic uh, to talk about there. But um, yeah, you'll definitely want to get back there, give them a new look, um, recheck them out, see, see what you think about them. Of course, if there are any questions. Um, that you have any comments about them, um, feel free to drop a comment here on the article. Uh, you can go ahead and either get me on Twitter or um, hit me via DM there, um, or you should see uh, us on Twitter as well, or on Reddit as well. So um, wherever you want to run into me um, and ask those questions, please do so. i um, always happy to, to get those, um, and we'd like to get some real good ones for uh, future episodes as well. I'm going to be having a little bit of a different episode this week. This time, um, I'm going to be talking with a couple of gentlemen. Um, one is Nathan. Uh, he's kind of the guy that started this mock uh, startup dynasty that we're doing. It's a 30-team league, too, so um, not a lot of fucking around going on when you get into 30 teams. Uh, depth and everything falls away pretty quick. Um, another participant in that is um, Stoffer Cochran, a uh, fellow writer at Prospects 1500 uh, along with me. I cover the Tigers, he covers the Marlins, um, two hopefully up and coming uh, franchises. Um, both have some good young talent in there. If you want to read about that, you can go over to, like I said, prospects1500.com and check that out. But I wanted to bring them on, um, do a segment with them, and just kind of walk through the... Um, the mock startup dynasty that we're doing. I think it's really interesting when you're talking about, you know, going 30 teams deep. Um, it's a little bit unusual. Um, and we got 30 good industry, um, industry minded owners in there as well. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of walk through that a little bit. Um, as, as of the time of recording this, we are into the eighth round. Um, went ahead and figured we'd discuss the first five rounds of that draft. And then maybe see about having them on again um, and, and cover the next little bit of it. Um, but, you know, first five rounds is probably, you know, an interesting aspect of it. It's where a lot of, you know, a lot of your, well, all of your elite guys are going to go. And, you know, guys with the heavy name values, once you start getting, you know, probably into the, you know, 11th round and beyond, you're looking at 300 players deep. So the rankings themselves you know, that, that I provide kind of go out the window a little bit because now you're drafting a lot more on, you know, need or, you know, exactly guys that, you know, you prefer. You know, my rankings, like I said, are meant to just be, you know, you know, uh, you know a benchmark, something something to, to you know, base your feelings, um, you know, off of along with others and just kind of get an idea for where someone might fall. So you can see guys that, you know, are 100 spots apart, you know, go in different areas just because, it, you know, it's team specific and format specific and, and whatnot, of course. So so I sit down uh, with Nathan and, and Stoffer and, you know, we discuss, you know, our picks, what our thought processes were, um, you know, give each other a little bit of a hard time here and there, talk about, you know, the picks from each round that stood out to us, um, be it good or bad. And so I think it's interesting, you know, just to get in the mind of somebody who, 
you know, is in a startup dynasty and, and where they were, you know, positioning themselves, positioning their teams and, and how it all came about. So, so I've got an interview with them here that I wanted to, to go through and I think that you guys will enjoy it uh, next week or next episode. Um, I think we'll maybe get more into discussing the rankings themselves again um, a little bit and also probably do a little bit of a recap of the draft itself, the 30 team mock that we're in the midst of. So with that, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a quick little break here and I'll meet you back up with Nathan and Stalker. All right, everyone, welcome back. So I've got a couple of uh, handsome gentlemen here with me. I've got Stoffer Cochran, and I've got Nathan, whose last name I cannot divulge because he's in the Witness Protection Program. Um, so we're going to let him maybe talk a little bit about that. But the reason that we're here is we are in the middle of a 30-team. That's right. I didn't say 10. I didn't say 14. I said 30-team uh, mock startup dynasty. And Stomper is the one that um, came up with the idea. Uh, I'm just lucky enough to be able to participate in it. But we're doing 30 industry owners. Um, it's We're drafting 30 players, um, pretty much one starting position across the board, three outfielders, of course, uh, one utility, nine pitchers. We're throwing 12 guys on the bench. Pretty standard scoring for the most part. Uh, not traditional, but, but standard for these days. So uh, we're talking home runs, RBIs. Runs, stolen bases, uh, on base, and slugging. And then pitching wise, we got quality starts, K's, wins, ERA, saves, and holds mixed together with whip. So, um, Stoffer, since uh, Nate's going to take a minute here to, to talk about the league and whatnot, do you want to introduce yourself and talk about some things you got going on? Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Stoffer Cochran. I'm a uh, writer for Prospects 1500, and uh, I write for the Marlins. Miami Marlins. Currently, uh, I got an article getting reviewed right now about the M upcoming MLB draft and who I think Miami should pick. Uh, they have a lot of depth in the outfield and um, the arms. They have a lot of depth there. So we're talking outfielders such as uh, Blade, Jesus Sanchez, Harrison, Misner, Burdick, Encarnacion, the Mesa brothers, and their depth also in arms with Sixto Sanchez, Cabrera, Rogers, Garrett, Guzman, Sharp. Vesia, Mejia, Nader. So I kind of went through and uh, did a little mock draft of my own about who I thought they should pick. And the first pick is a little easier since they picked three, but predicting the MLB draft is probably one of the hardest drafts to predict, in my opinion. Uh, post draft, I'll do a recap and a reflection of who they picked and how they might stack into the top 50 that I write. Mm -hmm. um, and our website's also. Uh, about to post up all the names by team of all the cuts that the MLB teams have been doing with all these round of cuts and massive layoffs. Yeah, that was Scott Green's idea to do that. I think that's a that's a neat little piece. Did did you want to give a sneak preview maybe of just the name of who you think they're taking third? Well, it's one of three, but I think it's going to be the pitcher Asa Lacy. Okay, left-hander with some nasty stuff. Okay, I hear you there. All right, Nathan, last name not to be disclosed. Uh, you want to go ahead and tell people about yourself? Yeah. Um, so mostly what I've been doing recently has been running mocks. Um, the website is being updated. Uh, most of what my website is is compiling rankings from other sites to, like, average them out so people can just easily sort stuff without also stealing revenue from other sites has been a tricky thing. Um, but... Uh, yeah, mostly what I've been doing is running mocks. So we just finished a 15-teamer. Um, we're just looking to rev up another one. And then uh, Ben, TV Dubs 11, suggested doing a 30-teamer, and we recruited. Um, like you said, those are the settings. Um, it's also daily lineups. So really, that just matters for Otani, but it matters. Um, so yeah, uh, we're also, there's been enough energy around this we're going to do an actual 30 teamer you got um, damn right we are league yeah so i'm sure some of the managers in this are gonna not be part of that so if people want they can reach out to me um easiest thing would just be on twitter at, at dynasty one stop or either of the other two of you can get a hold of it um yeah but that's me 
Yeah, so I think I I think I get partial credit for the idea of making this into a real league after the fact. Um, it was kind of a I think joke. You get almost exclusive credit for that. Well, all right. Well, I don't like to brag. I mean, well, I do, but I do, <laughs> I do, I do. Um, but yeah, I mean, a thirty-team league is interesting. I mean, it really does, you know, make things a lot more difficult. Um, like I said, you know, it's not a twelve or you know fourteen-team league. It's thirty, so depth goes away very very quickly and i you know we'll we'll kind of go through the first five rounds of this mock that we're in right now um and you'll see how you know how quickly that depth does go away um now one thing that i know that was briefly discussed a little bit in the group chat that we had was how people had mentioned you know they might draft a little bit differently um, if it was real than if it was a mock, which is why, you know, we decided not to take the mock that we had and, and turn it into anything. It would have been logistically impossible. But um, do you guys want to talk real quick just maybe about your thought process about, you know, the differences in players maybe you would have taken or profiles of players maybe you would have taken um, if this had been real as opposed to a mock? I think that's interesting. Personally, for me, I wouldn't have changed any of my picks. I, I approach it just as if it's going to be a real league anytime I do a mock draft just to try to get the full effect of the draft. Right. That seems, that seems simple, but, you know, even myself, um, you know, early in the draft, I guess it's, it's, you know, it's pretty easy to have the two line up. But later on in the draft, I think that my draft would be slightly different. I, uh, what, what, what say you? I don't yeah, know. I, yep, go ahead. I, I would go I go pretty similarly. Um, I think one of my hesitancies, too, in terms of we had already started, was the talk is to do the 30 team as a money league, and so I definitely don't want people putting money on the line if they're not going to draft necessarily the same, which I know for some people, if it's a money dynasty, they are a lot more inclined to go full in, win now. Um, like, I mean, we'll get to the rosters, but mine's very much a lots of tricycles little kids who hopefully will be great someday and if you're trying to win depending on how the money is split out i know some people will go far more yeah i don't care justin verlander's what 34 he's great this year and i'm just going to treat it as a redraft um so i i personally don't tend to change my strategy much um i mean last mock i did i went more win now just and now i'm doing more prospects just for fun to change it up but yeah, I, I treat it as if it were going to stay around when I start a mock. No, and I think it's interesting that, that you say that because, um, you know, we'll get into, you know, what our, our strategy was heading into this mock. And for me, um, you know, I'm more of a, of a prospect guy. Um, you know, I, I definitely know my, my major leaguers, obviously, but, you know, I tend to lean more towards, you know, getting, you know, your Wander Francos and Jared Coletics and Christian Robinsons, Mark Lucianos, and, you know, the, the draft we had done previously, I treated it as if I were to really you know, be drafting for, for my team. And I was extremely young um, and more so, I guess, in retrospect than, than I think I would, I would prefer. I, I think I'd rather, you know, draft a team that obviously is, you know, younger than old, but that is more win now and then use that prospect knowledge down the road, either via trade or, you know, first year player drafts, you know, getting guys off the waiver wire. So, so my strategy heading into this, and, and it's been difficult is, is not to pull the trigger and not to be the guy that, that drafts these, you know, prospects early. So, um, you know, when we go through my picks, um, I think you will see, you know, a much more win now mentality. And it's hard because like I said, you know, these, these guys, these prospects are the ones that, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, more in love with. Uh, so head into this one, Nathan, what, what was your plan exactly? Yeah. I think one thing interesting with your point too the deeper your prospect knowledge, the easier it is to kind of pull them later. I mean, the 30 team adds a whole other component to that, but if, if you know the, the deeper guys, I think some people who only know, you know, the typical top 150 list, it's like, well, those guys are all gone. And a 30 team are probably by what, the 10th, 11th round maybe. So um, I think your depth of knowledge there will be beneficial. But uh, heading into this, I wasn't totally sure direction. I knew with the 10th pick, I wanted kind of to tease or Vlad, uh, give me a really young <clears throat> stud piece to start out with, and I could go either way after that. I, I kind of wanted to get a sense of a room of 
are more people going to go win now? Are more people going to go lots of prospects? Um, and honestly, even after I took Adele in the second, I was like, well, I could still go win now, I guess, because he'll be up soon. Um, now we're, I mean, we're going to cover five rounds, but we're, what, eight rounds in. I've definitely got a bunch of prospects. So it's fun to me to build those teams, um, especially in mocks. But this is nothing different than I wouldn't maybe do in a real league, too, uh, just to build a team that's really good for the future. Um, but also, none of my guys are that far out. So it's not like this is going to be a five-year process to get production from any of these guys. So how, how are you approaching things, Stoffer? Uh, my philosophy going into it was go for bats. Uh, they generally age better than arms do, and I was looking for, you know, MLB-ready guys, and I was hoping to get my target age um, in the first five rounds to about 28 years old, and right now I'm at 28.4. So I got one old dude above 30, and that was uh, Goldie. But he offers good on base. You know, he just offers the whole package, and it's – something I can trade out for some of these younger guys that are going way early now, later on down the line. Yeah, I hear you there. I think everyone has a, a fairly similar strategy. I don't think anyone's chomping at the bit saying, all right, man, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to take Scherzer in the first round, and I'm going to follow him up with Verlander. <laughs> Give me Votto. You know, I mean, I think everyone has a similar strategy, but it, I, I think it more comes down to either, A, how comfortable you are with your prospect knowledge to to have the balls to be like, I'm the guy taking, taking Wander Franco. Um, or, you know, do you have a little more confidence or maybe you have, you know, you're more risk averse where, you know, your first prospect that you take is, you know, maybe, a you know, a 50 to a hundred guy. Um, so I think it's interesting, you know, um, so we're going to just go through our picks here for the first round. Um, the, let's see, Stomper, you had pick, um, one five. Um, you want to talk about who you took and why? Uh, Cody Bellinger was, uh, my pick. I did not expect him to land to me. I thought I would be trying to pick between probably Yellick and Betts and maybe Lindor is who I was kind of thinking my uh, pick would be. But then when Yellick went off the board right before me, I thought, you know, the first base outfield position flexibility was nice. I stuffed, I stuffed Cody in the outfield, 24-year-old and probably one of the top at the position for first base. Yeah, so next between us, I had um, the seventh pick, um, and I went with Lindor. Um, I honestly didn't plan on taking a shortstop uh, with my first pick just because shortstop is so deep that I, I did intend on um, taking an outfielder um, or possibly Vlad. Um, that, that's my dude. But um, I, I did plan on taking an outfielder. Um, what I didn't expect is that six outfielders were going to go off the board right ahead of me. Um, so, you know, I had to basically decide between Lindor, uh, guys like Bryce Harper, Jordan Alvarez, um, or like Eloy Jimenez. Um, I briefly did consider like Cole or DeGrom or Bueller, but I just couldn't justify the value there. So end of the day, it came down to Lindor or Vlad and, you know, both positions are extremely deep. I probably am as high or higher on Vlad than anybody, but I still went ahead and took Lindor. Um, and I guess that does make a nice segue into Nathan's pick. Nathan had the 10th pick. Um, you want to talk about who you took and why? Yeah. So, like I said, Tatis and Vlad were kind of my main targets just because they're studs and they're really young. Um, I thought about Trey when he was still there. And I thought about Story, too. Just they're great all-around players. Um, but the age difference was pretty much the thing. I mean, I know Vlad didn't have an amazing year last year, but I have no worries about what his future is going to hold um their base isn't shallow obviously but to put him at the cornerstone and just leave him there for 10 15 years is good by me so you said you you also thought about trey turner um i think mm -hmm. he's kind of a he's kind of a, a polarizing character some people you know would consider him that high people like myself would not um, and I don't consider myself low on Turner. Uh, he, he's my 20th ranked uh, guy. Um, and you had taken Vlad, who I have 10th. So I, I might be a little bit low on Turner. But do you want to talk about exactly, you know, your thoughts on, on Turner? Yeah, I, I think in OBP especially he drops a little bit. Um, 
I just think getting that speed locked in, um, it's so much rarer. And I think a lot of the conversation around redraft with speed is plays less into dynasty sometimes, but um, I, I think just the speed and all around that he offers, a little bit of an OBP drag, but getting those steals, it was one of the reasons I was kind of hoping to tease would slide because I mean, Vlad's not giving me speed. Um, but I think... Yeah, that's that's why he was considered. Obviously, I didn't go with him, so I think I also have Vlad higher. But um, the speed was the main reason I even took some time to think about it. Yeah, and I, I think that's a very fair, fair point. Um, specifically, I think with the guys I took here, you'll see my strategy is kind of to get some you know power and speed guys uh, as opposed to, you know, if I take a guy like Trey Turner, if and when he gets hurt, if he's my main source of steals, now what do I do? Now, now I go from being, you know, solid or, or good in that category to what what do I have left? So um, I used to kind of go more that route where I would take, you know, maybe I'd make sure I got, you know, Trey Turner and Malik Smith and, and not worry about that position again. But, um, you know, as soon as somebody gets injured, you know, then, then you're kind of out on that. But um, Dave, did you say you were thinking Eloy this early? Well, no, not necessarily. Well, yes and no. Um, I, I, I was wanting to start okay. with an outfielder. So my, my plan was okay. I'm going to take the best available outfielder at with the seventh pick. I did not expect that six outfielders would go ahead of me. So um, he was just kind of the, the, the next group of guys. You know, um, Harper, Alvarez, and, and Jimenez would have been the next three. And I just, no, I, I couldn't take Eloy that high. I like him, but I don't like him that damn much, you know. Um <laughs> So, so, you know, we do have 30 teams, so, you know, the first round, you know, is a little bit deeper than, you know, typically, uh, obviously. So, uh, one of the things that, that stood out to me in the first round, the guy that I want to talk about um, for the first round that got taken was um, Cattell Marte. So, he went 30th, so literally at the end of the round, but I don't have him ranked nearly that high. I've got him down in 61, which is actually, I, I, he probably jumped up about 20 spots with, from my last rankings. Um, I just, I, I just don't buy it, man. Um, you know, prior to prior to hitting 329 last year, uh, he was a 200, and, you know, 260 hitter, which isn't terrible, but it's not fucking 329. Um, you know, and he hit 32 of his 54 home runs last year. Um, uh, that's a lot, considering you know he has played, you know, the majority of those other years. Uh, st stolen bases were on par with his averages, so I'm good there. I just don't think that. You know, I'm going to trust that Marte is going to be the same player he was last year going forward. Um, so that one raised my eyebrows a little bit. Uh, but was there any anything good or bad um, pick-wise that, that really stood out to you guys from that first round? I had Marte as a first-round surprise, too. Um, yeah, I think you said you had him around 60. That's around yeah. where I'd put him, too. Yeah, I've got him 61. He, yeah, it's just he's good but he's compared to the options and the players going around him. Um, that same guy took him at the turn and took Hira in the second. And then Franco went and like, you could have had a hero Franco start. Like, give me that um, instead of Marte and Hira. But yeah, Mar that was just a lot too early for me, for Marte. Um, other than that, nothing really stood out that much in the first round. Um, yeah, it's, just, yeah, it's so kind of hard in the first round because you're getting obviously you know elite players, so it's hard to really have too big of a stretch in the first round. Yeah, well, I think good value in the round would have been Arenado. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah, he went nineteenth overall. Let me just see where I have him ranked. I'm sure it's pretty damn close. I've got him ranked. Oh, 15th. So, yeah, uh, technically he was he would have been a little bit of a value in my book, but but yeah. And like y'all said, Marte, but I can, you know, I started to uh, write some notes down about it, but then I looked at his age, um, and yeah, he did, you know, break out a little bit this year, and do I think it's sustainable? Personally, I don't, but I can see how somebody could look at him. And, you know, the target age, the golden age is 27 years old, so they could be a high-risk, high-reward kind of a player here with someone who's got some proven MLB experience. So I I can justify it a little bit. I wouldn't have done it, but that was my one 
kind of reach to. Yeah, I got you. So let, let's move on to the second round. Then we get. I think each round gets a little more interesting because there's a lot more variables. You know, um, so uh, between us, our our first pick in the second round was fifty uh, first overall, uh, which was you, Nathan. You want to talk about that pick? Yeah, uh, this was kind of where I decided. Yeah, I'm going to go young. Uh, went with Adele, who I love. Adele um, behind Franco. I don't. I'd probably put him two. Um, I've seen some people even put him one still mm -hmm. um, in terms of prospects, but just I like the tools, um, like what he brings. I mean, when you're going young, I don't care that much, honestly, about where you play. Um, it matters some, but not a ton. And I just really like the value. I considered Paddock there to kind of get a young arm. Um, and I mean, he went right after me, but... I'm not totally sold, and I, in Dynasty, always rather build around bats. Um, in some leagues where I've taken over Dynasty teams, I just I build bats, and then when I'm ready to contend, I trade them for arms um, when I've got a surplus, and I just find that works really well. So I'd much rather start out with a bunch of bats, which I don't think I even have a pitcher in <laughs> the eighth round. So, yeah, spoil, um, spoiler alert. Yeah, <laughs> no arms for me. Um, so yeah, I'm just I'm a big fan of Adele's. Um, we'll we'll see. And timeline screwed up anyways. With who knows if there's baseball this year, but just I future all star, in my opinion. So yeah, yeah no, I think that's easy. Um, I mean, I, I have th I'm three picks later than you. I had pick 54. Um, if Adele would have been there, I would have taken him, no doubt. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, even though he hasn't, you know, he, he's still a prospect. He's He's going to play very soon, so he's, he's definitely a, a, still a win now to me. Um, I went with, I guess, what you could argue is more of a win now guy, but um, you know, I, I went Manny Machado. And for me, I mean, in a perfect scenario, if the board would have fell right, I would have went outfielder first round. I would have went with the, the pitcher in the second round. Um, but it, it just it didn't line up for me. So the top 11 pitchers at this point were off the board. Um, I just didn't, didn't see the value there. Um, Nola and Snell were both available. I did debate between the two of them, uh, but at the end of the day, I just felt that Machado just was too good of a value um, to pass up. Um, you know, I, I do value bats over arms, like you said. I think most people do. Um, and so it wasn't even that it was a coin flip between the two. I do like Machado better than Snell and Nola, but even if it was a coin flip, I would have just opted for the bat. So you know, I get I start off with two bats, um, you know, that are that are proven at the plate. And then um Stoffer, you had the fifty six picks, so we're all kinda right in the same group, but we're all within five picks of each other. Um so you were two picks after me, pick fifty six. You wanna talk about that one? Yeah, I was uh I was looking for a middle infielder at this point. I already got my outfield spot filled and um I feel there's not a lot of depth in the middle infield that I like. So I went with uh, Altuve. I think he's one of the top second basemen in the league right now. I think he's probably got another couple of years at that spot. And depending on how my team does, uh, he's another one. Of, he's one, one of those flip pieces that I could flip in the next year or two to get some younger guys in or draft picks. But I think he's a good value for me here. I've seen Altuve see all slide both in a lot of drafts lately and dynasty ones. Um, He's only 30. I don't know if this is all the banging scheme stuff or what, but yeah, <laughs> I think that's a good value there. I mean, to be honest, in, in one of my dynasty leagues, I, I did trade him this offseason, um, and a lot of it was just because, you know, I was a little bit um, concerned about the whole, I don't know, conspiracy or whatever you want to call it, you know. Um, and, I mean, it's not that he's old, but I do, in a perfect world, like to get rid of a guy at least a year, if not two years, before he could start to lose value so he was kind of right around the age of where I would look to move him you know I try not to necessarily ever have to fully rebuild I like to just kind of you know re retool reshape my roster um so I, I did recently just deal him but um what was the return for that I knew you're gonna. I knew you're gonna fucking ask me that <laughs> and I didn't plan on talking about it ahead of time so I didn't look um oh shit I don't remember um okay I make so many trades that it's hard to remember, honestly. Um, shit, yeah, I don't, I don't remember. I, good question, but I'm, I didn't, I wasn't ready for it. Um, 
Go ahead. Looking at him when you're going, when if you're uh, looking to deal him to a uh, championship team, that's something you can deal. That someone's like, oh, look at this name. He's going to have value. He's going to fill in the middle spot. That's why I kind of lean towards him more than somebody else, just because of the name presence too. And it's a shallow as heck position. Right. So, do you guys want? I'm looking at this trade, so I'll have it for you here in a second. But do you guys <laughs> want to talk about anything that that stood out to you from the round? I got a good. Good value in round two, I think, was Rendon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At 33 overall, I think they're going to be happy with that pick for the next few years. Yeah, I really liked the Otani pick. Um, like I mentioned, it's a daily league, so I think his value just skyrockets. Um, I mean, I'm a Cubs fan, so I've seen Joe Madden shenanigans, so it actually kind of concerns me a little bit. Um, but he's going to play... And in a daily league, with that at bat, the speeds, the power, and the pitching he could offer, mm-hmm. that upside is insane. So. All right, I've got I've got the trade here. It's a little bit of a surprising one too. Um, so I traded him for four prospects, um, three of which actually are arms, which is kind of something that I, I usually shy away from. Um, one thing that I will typically say is. I, I don't hold a ton of value typically for arms that are like two or more years out. I just, they're so volatile. But I traded him for um, Brendan Malone, George Valera, Devi Garcia, and Daniel Espino. Someone call the cops. You just robbed that man. <laughs> so, I mean, I definitely got value. <laughs> I definitely got value. But would it surprise anyone if none of those four guys panned out? No. No, not really. Now, would it surprise you if Espino wins a Cy Young, Debbie Garcia leads the league in saves one year, Brendan Malone makes five all-star teams, and George Valera wins two home run crowns? Probably not. No. So we'll see. It's a lot of risk-reward. But anyways, that was my that was the trade. It took me a second to find it. It's actually a very unlike-me trade to make. Usually it's the other way around, but... Um, that stuck out to you in round two, Dave? So, um, Anthony Rizzo, which is actually a guy that I yep. have on that same fucking team. So, <laughs> go figure. Um, <laughs> he, he went 34, so he went, like, early in the round. Um, I have him ranked way down at 73rd. Um, I mean, the only thing that I can say for this pick, possibly, I'd have to really dive into who was available and whatnot. But, um, you know, first base isn't very deep. So, if it's a position that you are kind of looking to say, hey, I'm going to make sure that, you know, I get a guy um, at that position that I like early on, I could see that. Um, I did ha- I did see that Matt Olson was on the board already, uh, or still. I have Olson 34th in my ranking, so I have him like 40 spots ahead of Rizzo. So if I had been, you know, thinking along those lines, I would have pulled the trigger on Olson, which would have been a fine pick there. Um so with him being on the board, yeah, that I, I look at Rizzo and I kind of scratch my head a little bit. Yeah, Rizzo is the third first baseman off the board. And mm-hmm. he's great. He plays up in OVP, but that still was too early for me to have bought him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's see. I'm looking at my first base rankings right now. I want to see exactly where I have Rizzo ranked as far as third baseman are concerned. And, of course, it's taken a minute to load. Let's see. I have Rizzo, and then it's a fifth. So, I've got Bellinger, Freeman, Olsen, Alonzo, all ahead of him. So, uh, I guess with Bellinger, he's the fourth first base we've taken. So, yeah. yeah, if you, yeah. So, so I don't know. A little, little early, but I mean, it's not anything crazy if, if you know, you were mm-hmm. looking at that position as one you wanted to hit for that reason. I, I could see it. Um, so, moving on to the third round. Um, Stoffer, you had the first pick. You went, um, you had the 65th pick. Um, you want to talk about your guy? Uh, I was looking for, you know, corner infield here, and I think your Eugenio Suarez is very underrated in the league in a lot of drafts. He's 28 years old. He offers great power. I know he has a little injury thing going on right now, but due to the delay of the season, that's only helped get him ready for the game. Uh, yeah, so I think I was looking for one of the top in the position in third base, and he's one of the top three guys in third base, in my opinion, maybe four, top four. Yeah, you want to hear a, a fun fact about Eugenio Suarez as a as a Tigers fan? 
Yes. Do, would you do? I'm sure you could even guess, but do you want to take a guess at who we traded Suarez to to get? Boyd. No, no, we we got rid of Suarez and we. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, no, not not Boyd. We actually got Boyd from um, from Toronto with the price deal. But um, okay. all right, here, here's a here's an awesome name for Eugenio Suarez who we could use on that team so badly right now. We we got Alfredo Simone for him. Ooh. Yep. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That that was the that was the, the brilliant trade that we made. Um, anywho, two picks later, sixty um, seventh. Um, I had. Um, Starling Marte off the board. Uh, I kind of been talking about how I was looking for an outfielder. Um, finally had a guy that actually made sense. Um, so I was looking for an outfielder. I got one. Um, with the previous pick, I guess I guess Marte was somewhat in my thought process, but um, I, I was hoping he'd be able to fall to me, and of course he did. So he's 31, which isn't necessarily ideal, but it's definitely not a deal breaker either. Um, and outside of, you know, 2017 where he only played um, 77 games he has remained healthy um, and it's a good source of power and speed which is something I talked about you know a little earlier those are the kind of guys that, that I'd like to go for uh, you know guys that are going to get me a 2020 you know type season um, and he hasn't hit below 275 so he kind of provides you know every category for me at a position that that I wanted. Um, I've got him ranked 35th in my rankings, so I think to get him at 67, um, for me at least, was was really solid. Um, Nathan, I think you kind of start to hit home on on what your draft ended up becoming uh, with with your next pick, uh, the seventh pick. You want to talk about talk about our guy? Yeah. So I went with Kalenic. Sorry, Mets fans. Um, <laughs> he's going to be a stud. Um, I mean, he's got five tool potential. Um, He's certainly a better human being than Edwin Diaz, too. That helps. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he, again, like Adele, just upside out the, just so much. Um, speed, power, well, yeah, I, I'm trying to remember how many home runs. Okay. Not a ton of power, decent power. But he'll get the speed in there, and with Vlad, I've got a power base, so I'm not too worried. Um, yeah, again, just top end prospect um yeah this is where i really had to decide what i was going to do um like do i go with anola or someone there get a starter start going for now or any other number of guys who went around here um but decided to just go prospect and clinic was at the top of my board for them yeah and i mean he's not a guy that's far away anyway so you know, even even drafting him, it's not like you're you're losing a whole lot. And his upside is, I mean, quite obviously just ridiculous. So, um, yeah, I think I think that's just a fine pick. Um, yep. do, do you guys have something from round three that stood out to you, good or bad? I thought a reach in this draft might have been uh, pick number 88, Adley Rushman. I think catchers take a little longer to develop, and I just thought the third round for him was kind of early. Yeah, it's, it's, third round is kind of early for a catcher in general, but um, but yeah, no, I, I mean it's a dynasty though, so you know you're getting a guy who you know arguably this time next year could be the number one prospect in baseball. So I mean I I get it to some extent, but yeah, um, you won't see me taking a catcher for for quite a while still. Um, I like the value on Correa. Um, if he had gone back, I might have considered him. Um, a lot of people are really down on him. I, mean, I remember a couple of years ago, this trade is awful now, but he was part of a trade where I actually traded away, I think it was Acuna, um, which, eh, that was a bad trade. Um, <laughs> but at that point, Correa was a stud, and he was like getting ranked in the top 10 everywhere. Um, and I don't think that was totally mistaken. He's, what, 25 still, I think? Yes. So not like he's old. So if he can just stay healthy, he could put together some monster seasons. Well, and I'm trying to look it up now because I also traded um, Carlos Correa um, during the off season. I had him and Altuve. I think I roughly know what I got for him, but damn it, if I'm trying to go back and find exactly who I got, I'm pretty. I'm almost positive in that deal. I got Julio Rodriguez. Um, mm. But I'm trying to look it up exactly. And the guy that I made that trade with is probably going to listen to this podcast. 
Um, so fuck you, Dan. Why he's why I know he's probably listening. Um, <laughs> let's see if I can find it. Ah, okay, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, there we go. Never mind. I got um, Shane Boz and Julio Rodriguez. So, I really like Boz. So two guys. Two my pretty much my well definitely my favorite prospect in general um, in in J Rod and then um, what what I think would have been my breakout prospect pitcher uh, of the year in Shane Boz. So I was happy with that one. Uh, the pick that I did not like uh, in this round was, um, oddly enough, um, pick 69. So nice. Um, but uh, Whit Merrifield. Um, so I've got him way down at 112th in my rankings. So we're talking about a, you know, almost a 60 spot um, difference. So, yeah, I, I definitely think he went early. Um, he's the same age as Marte. So he's 31. So not bad. Um, but he's only, you know, played half as much as Marte, so he's not nearly as proven. Um, and he doesn't provide you with any power um, at all, hardly. Um, you know, he's never hit 20 home runs. He probably never will. Maybe he'll get close. Um, I think he hit 19 last year, so it's not impossible, but, but that's not his game at all. He does provide steals, which, as we talked about earlier, are kind of uh, something that, that's going away. It's a lost art, so... Um, you know, I can see it for that reason. He's got, you know, multiple eligibility for this year. Um, I think he's going to have second base and outfield eligibility, so that's cool. But um, he's going to be the starting center fielder for the Royals, so he's going to lose that going into next year. So, you know, if we're talking about dynasty as opposed to redraft, you know, obviously you lose that extra eligibility. Um, and even those stolen bases, which would be the only thing that I could say, okay, I, I get why you made that pick. Um, even that's kind of a concern. Um, he had 34 stolen bases in 2017, so that's good. Um, 2018, he had 45. That's fucking fantastic. And then last year, he dropped all the way down to 20. So I don't know if that's a trend or if that's going to be a little blip on the radar. But if he doesn't get those stolen bases, you know, back up in the 30s or higher, he's a guy that could be, you know, 200, 250 in my ranking. So, um, so yeah, I think that's a little bit of a reach personally well, you know what you know what they say speed ages horribly so. <sighs> well yeah i mean like i said it's not like 31 is old but it's not you know it's not the kind of stolen bases that i'm, I'm reaching for but we'll right. we'll, we'll see we'll what see shocked me even more with that pick was mondesi was still on the board if you're gonna go mm -hmm. with someone with like the same concerns but at least upside and youth to just go with mondesi except for that on base percentage ugh. I just right. couldn't, even for the steals, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I guess that's true. That's the one thing that maybe is going for him over that. But, yeah. yeah. All right, so I let's... wouldn't draft Mondesi anyways. <laughs> now let's get to the fourth row now. Um, Nathan, you had the first pick. Um, pick 111. One of, one of my favorite, favorite players. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, K-Rob... I mean, I feel like I'm a broken record over here, but he's a really good prospect. Um, <laughs> yeah, again, I, I was just, I'm going young, but still not that far up. I mean, if he's further than the other guys, I mean, maybe what, optimistically 2022 um, ETA? Maybe, but yeah. Upside, again, um, I mean, you could see 2020 happening. Um, I mean, if the ball doesn't change more than that. But, yep, again, great guy. Further away, a little more risk. But, um, yeah, I'm curious your thoughts since you said he's one of your favorites. Oh, Jesus Christ, I love the kid. Um, uh, <laughs> I mean, he, he's he, the power is going to be there. there. There's really not a big question about that. Um, you know, where a lot of people – have some worries about him is how well he's going to be able to maintain athleticism and speed. And from what I've heard, I've obviously not seen the kid yet this year, but um, from what I've heard, he, he really kind of trimmed up, um, you know, over the off season, you know, looks, looks like a different kind of player. So I think that that really bodes well for, you know, him turning into more of a power speed guy. You know, if he's just a power guy, yeah, that obviously is going to take away, um, his value quite a bit, but if he can, you know, be a twenty twenty type guy that hits, you know, anywhere above two sixty, I mean that that's a that's a fantastic um, fantasy player. So it's a little bit early, obviously, to you know to put a gold seal on him, but um, I absolutely love Christian Robinson. 
So I, I picked three picks later. Um, I had picked 114. Um, I went with a you know kind of a similar player to who I had just taken um, in Marte. Um, again, another outfielder is that kind of a spot that I was looking to build right from the beginning, but wasn't able to um, right off the bat. Um, I took Oscar Mercado. Um, it's, the outfield position, even though you would think it's very deep because there you know are so many per team, it really does thin out quickly. And then you add 30 teams to the mix, and it thins out that much faster. Um, to be honest with you, if either Casey Mize or Matt Manning, specifically Casey Mize, was available, um, I would have taken him. Um, I'm, I swear to God, I'm not intentionally ignoring pitching, um, but the value just hasn't been there. Um, so, like I said, with Mercado, I, I get another guy, um, you know, like Marte, that's, you know, power and speed. So, as opposed to, you know, reaching for a Whit Merrifield or reaching for a Mondesi or something like that. Um, you know, I prefer to, to stack my lineup with as many, you know, guys that, that can give me some power and speed together. Um, I would expect that Mercado and Marte, if they were to play a full 2020 season, you know, would have both got me, you know, 2020, oddly enough, um, you know, for, for, for my team. And I think over the next five years, um, I can only expect Mercado um, to improve improve on his average and on base percentage um average isn't terrible it's at he was at 269 i think he'll improve that uh, on base percentage was pretty bad um 318 but i think as he matures gets a little more comfortable at the plate I, I think that will i think that'll increase um Stauffer, you went two picks after me 116th uh you want to talk about goldie yeah, first baseman had been flying off the board in this draft, and looking at the depth remaining, I didn't like much else out there, so I went ahead and I had two guys I was contemplating here, and the other guy went a few picks later that I was disappointed in not snagging Corey Seager, but I thought Goldie was, with the position as scarce as it was, I thought he was the best choice for my team. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, it looks like we... Hey. I was talking about Goldie, and then it seemed to have froze up or something. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. All right, well, I don't know I don't know how that's going to record, but that, that was yeah, interesting. Yeah, the Goldie talk, and then everything just stopped. All right, well, um, I guess I won't beat a dead horse, but in case um, it didn't pick up my audio for um, for what hey, I had said. There? Yeah. The microphone's muted. I wonder if he got kicked out for a second or something. You guys hear me? There we are. All right, that was really weird. I I could myself was recording and nobody else, and then I started hearing you guys. And okay, well, anyways, um, 
that's going to make for an interesting recording on the podcast. Um, so sorry about the technical difficulty there, but um, yeah, I heard all of the the Goldsmith stuff, um, and basically I was just talking about. Um, I felt like Josh Donaldson was a was a nice value there. Um, he went. I don't know exactly where he went, but somewhere in the one hundred low one hundreds, um, and I have him eighty six in my rankings. Uh, I was just making a point about. Um, you know, I think that uh, a veteran, an old veteran like him, kind of goes undervalued in some of these. So, so early, or not so early, but you know, you know, without him going too drastically late. All right, let's uh, get to the fifth round. Then let's see. First, you one of us talk about Savelli. Say again. Uh, pick one twelve. That seemed. Very early to go with Savelli, Savali, Aaron. Oh, oh, Aaron Savali, the pitcher. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let me look and see where I have him ranked. But yeah, it's not going to be this high. Go for another hundred. Wow. Anyone want to take a guess out of seven hundred and fifty players where I have Aaron Savali ranked? Two ten. Higher. Three fifty. Higher. Higher. Four forty three is where Aaron Savali ranks. So higher is lower. Um, yeah, yeah however, I guess, yeah, however you want to look at that, yeah, uh, higher or lower, yeah. Um, 443, sandwiched, sandwiched right around Steven Piscotti and Merrill Kelly. Seems about right. Yeah. Not a lot of strikeout potential from him, unless they think it's coming. I, I guess shame on me for not seeing he win that round, because, yeah, that would be much more notable than... than all right, well, we had um, some technical difficulties there. And, uh, our recording software had crashed, so um, I don't know exactly what you all heard. Um, you might have been getting tired of listening to us anyways, and maybe um, Aaron Savali, who I don't know if that even picked up on the recording or not, um, broke um, what we had going on. But we're just going to pretend like it didn't happen, I suppose, and uh, we're just going to go on to the fifth and final round and kind of wrap this bad boy up. So... Um, Stoffer, you had pick 125. You went with a catcher. Um, let's hear about it. I definitely was not planning to go with a catcher, but I was targeting, I was hoping Seager would fall back to me in the fifth. But there again, I'm looking at the positions and I was looking for a top guy in their position. And being 28 years old, I got at least three or four more years with this kid, Wilson Contreras, and he's one of the top producing catchers in the league. Yeah, I have him 131st in my rankings, so, you know, you're pretty much right on with where I had him. Um, I went ahead and... Nice, but I love Willie. You, lo- so good. you love Willie's? What'd you say? Willie. <laughs> oh, Will- oh, you love Willie. Oh, I- yeah. you can understand my confusion. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Contreras. There we go. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I <laughs> went ahead and um, I had pick 127, so two picks later. Um, I wasn't bullshitting when I said I was looking to, you know, get my outfield in, in shape. Um, this time I went with someone a little bit different. Um, you know, my other guys, Lindor and Mercado and Marte are kind of, you know, power and speed. I went straight up power um, and I went friend Mel Reyes. Um, you know, no doubt that, you know, the dude's going to hit bombs. Uh, I, I do have concerns, though, about um, just his hit tool in general. The, the guy is terrible against breaking balls, absolutely terrible. Um, and, you know, if, if he is able to fix that, um, you know, that will obviously help him cut down on his Ks. And I think that 2019 is extremely repeatable. But once they started, you know, getting him off-speed pitches, he, he definitely struggled. So there is definitely the potential that he's going to have, uh, you know, an adjustment period that, that lasts for an extended period of time, whether that's half a season or a full year, I don't know, but it's a little bit risky, I think. Um, but I, again, I wanted to add that power. I wanted to get an outfielder, uh, in the mix. And so, um, with what was left on the board, that's where I went was Fran Mil Reyes, who I have 113th in my rankings. I got him at 127. So a slight value, I suppose. Um, Nathan, you, you had my favorite pick of the round. You want to talk about your pick? Uh, yeah, so I took Keyboom. Um, I think if he hadn't had that cup of coffee last year, he'd probably already have been gone. Um, I mean, he OPSed almost 900 in AAA. The dude can hit. Um, not going to get a lot of speed, but a lot, like, 
pretty much everyone I have other than K-Rod. He'll be up. Um, he's already listed as the main third baseman for the uh, Nats, though. They've also got Castro and Kendrick and Cabrera, so who knows what's going on there. Um, but that also might mean he'll bounce around second and third and short and get multi-eligibility, which would be great. But, yeah, again, kick and hit. Um, it's not going to give you much speed, but was happy to plug him in at middle infield for sure. Yeah, and he's definitely, like I said, he's, he's my favorite pick of the round. And it's not even that it's such a value, I guess, because I have him ranked 124th right now. Uh, you've got him at 130, so pretty much, you know, where he should go. Uh, but, yeah, I think that, you know, the Nationals would be borderline stupid not to just throw him at third base and, and give him some run. Um, I would be surprised if, you know, next weekend when I go to do these rankings, he doesn't come a little closer to 100 for me. But I, you nailed it. You know, he had a terrible debut and, you know, very small sample size, too. Um, and yeah. people have kind of given up on him a little bit. And he's just 22 years old. And, you know, if he, he's no different of a player than he was you know, a year ago, minus that, you know, terrible little sample size that he had. Uh, this is a guy that I think at peak, now granted, we're not talking, he's going to do this in 2021, but, you know, at peak, 27, 28, 29 years old, I, I could see him, I wouldn't be shocked at all, um, with a season where he bats about 280, 25 to 30 home runs, knocks in somewhere around 100 runs, um, sneaks you, you know, five, six, seven, eight stolen bases as well. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's a very, I think, I think he's a solid player. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to move my rankings just a little bit. And if I'm wrong, then well, fuck me. So whatever. Um, so let's just real quick recap the first five picks we had. Um, I had, uh, Lindor, Machado, Marte, Mercado, and Reyes, uh, Nathan, you've snagged Vlad, um, Joe Adele, Kalenic. Christian Robinson and Keyboom and Stauffer. You've got Bellinger, Altuve, Suarez, Goldsmith, and um, Willie. I'll call him forever now. Willie Contreras. <laughs> um, I mean, I do like my my batch of guys. I think that Nathan's guys. If I could swap teams right now, I, I would. I would probably do so. Um, he's got the outfielders that I'm looking for, but I mean, he's got guys that are all extremely young, and he's got my boy Vlad. So. Um, I'll, I'll eat a little bit of crow here, and I will say that Nathan, I, I the first five rounds, I think your team is is the best setup for a dynasty. Personally, um, uh, do you want to gloat some about it, or what? Or what do you want to say anything? <laughs> uh, I mean, especially with a three outfield format, Adele, Kalenic, K. Rob, and I mean, this is past the five rounds, but I also picked up Drew Waters. I will take that outfield all day. Absolutely. Um, any closing closing st- thoughts from you there, Mr. Cockering? Mm, I'm just ready to get my pick in for today because I got my sight set on somebody. I hope it falls to me since somebody took Lede from me. Uh-oh, uh-oh. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys joining me. Um, we had a weird little interruption, which I've honestly never had before, so so that'll make things interesting. Um, but, Nathan, thank you for, for getting this set up. Um, I'll thank you in advance already for putting up with us for for hopefully many, many years when we do this for real. Um, but you guys can, can give him a follow. Um, he's on Twitter at Dynasty One Stop. Um, again, his name's Nathan. His last name is blacked out on my notes page because he's in the witness protection program um, but that's okay i'm sure he didn't do anything wrong and then um Stouffer cochran you can get him um at stouffer that's s-t-o-f-f-e-r 81 um on twitter and you can check him out as well prospects 1500 like he said um ha- writing for one of my favorite uh, organizations youth wise um the marlins so gentlemen i thank you very much for for joining me and I wish you nothing but the worst of luck going forward in our in our future real league. See you guys. Thanks, guys.